Well, the show is Conversations and my name is Elizabeth. It is a bright day for me and um, my face will actually tell you that it is bright. Even though what we want to discuss today may not seem particularly very nice, but then if you look at it, it's one of the most cheerful things to discuss. It is still celebrating women and the theme is Choose to Challenge. Last week we talked about marriage and the woman. This week, we're going to be discussing parenting, the challenges, and of course, the role of a woman in it. It is one thing that um, every single home must have parenting, and a lot of times, it is put on the woman. Well, Elizabeth is not alone. I'll let everybody do their own talking. Let's start from another woman. Discuss or introduce yourself. Hello, good morning. Um, happy International Women's Day to all the women. In fact, happy the month of March to all the women. My name is Faith Mwadishe. And? Yeah, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Halima Usman. And uh, same, same, I just wish you all a very wonderful month. Happy International Women's Day. Okay. Kevin Fife is a uh, public good advocate, um, reaching all the women. Um, happy International Women's Day. And uh, for the men, uh, we made it possible for women to be women. You know, so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would have been surprised if you didn't have that. <laughs> and a lot of people will be asking, well, how come we're celebrating women and we have uh, Kevin seated with us? Well, Kevin, on his um, uh, page within the month, the month of March really is you know, mapped out to celebrate not just um, mothers, but women generally, Turn ladies, in. girls, everybody put together. Kevin took up and said that he is a far mom, far mother. I don't know what that means, but he's going to explain it to <laughs> the public <laughs> when we come back. But have you, have you tried to look for a job? They say jobs are very, very difficult. But there is one job that is always available, you know. And um, let me not empty it. Let's just see this job and come back. Just give me one second. Thank sure. you. Sorry. Uh-huh. Hey. Hi. Two minutes. Thank you. Hi. Good afternoon. Sorry about hey, that. Hey, Hi, nice Hi. to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Have you ever done one of these interviews uh, over the camera before? No. Well, let me tell you a little bit about the job to get started with. It's not just um, a job. It's sort of probably the most important job. Uh, the title that we have going right now is Director of Operations, but it's really kind of so much more than that. Responsibilities and requirements are, are really quite extensive. Uh, first category for the requirements would be mobility. This job requires that you must be able to work standing up most or really all of the time, uh, constantly on your feet, constantly bending over, constantly exerting yourself, a high level of stamina. Uh, uh, okay. That's a lot. For how many, like, for how many hours? Uh, 135 hours to unlimited hours a week. It's basically 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I'm sure you'll have a chance from time to time to maybe just sit down here and there, yeah? Uh, you mean like a break? Yeah. Uh, no, there are no breaks available. Is, th is that even legal? Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. Okay, yeah. so like no lunch? You can or... have lunch, but only when the associate is done eating their lunch. Uh, I think that's a little intense. No. no. Not possible. That's crazy. Now, this position requires excellent negotiation and interpersonal skill. We're really looking for someone that might have a degree in uh, medicine, in finance, and the culinary arts. You must be able to wear several hats. Associate needs constant attention. Sometimes they have to stay up with an associate throughout the night. Being able to work in a chaotic environment, if you, if you had a life, we'd ask you to sort of give that life up. No vacations. In fact, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, and holidays, the workload is gonna go up, and we demand that, with, with a happy disposition. Uh, that's almost cruel. <laughs> that's almost a, a very, very sick, twisted joke. But when there's time to sleep, or? Oh, no time to sleep. Yeah, all-encompassing, all almost. That's exactly right. 365 days a year? Yes. No, that's, that's inhumane. That's, that's very insane. The meaningful connections that you make and the, the feeling that you get from really helping your associate are immeasurable. Also, let's cover the salary. The position is going to pay absolutely nothing. Excuse me? No. Nobody's doing that for free. Yeah, pro bono. <laughs> completely for free. <laughs> no! What if I told you there's someone that actually currently uh, holds this position right now? Billions of people, actually. Who? Moms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Moms. 
<laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> oh! <laughs> and they meet every requirement, oh, don't wow. they? Oh my god. Moms are the best! Yeah, there's no pay. They're 24 hours. They're always there. Now I'm thinking about my mom. Yeah, and what are you thinking about her? I'm thinking about all those nights and everything. Thank you so much for everything you do. I know it doesn't seem like I appreciate all of it, but I definitely do. So, Mom, I want to say thank you for everything that you've done. I love you very much. You've been there through thick and thin. My mom is just awesome. She's awesome. That last part of the uh, clip, it, it really caught me, you know, and uh, the good thing is that I'm in public domain, so I don't have opportunity to cry because where, what she said, you know, each time I think about my life, I think about my mom who was always there. And I recall at a point and asked myself, does this woman ever sleep? Because she's up when we, when we go to bed. And when we wake up, the only difference is that she's showered, she's wearing a new clothes, but she's still up. And I know we wake early. So how does she do it? Is there any bathroom in the dream? Is there any, I don't understand, what happens really? I don't know if you guys had the same experience growing up, but I did. And I kept wondering until when I grew older, I found out that it wasn't a magic. It's something you don't even know when you start, start doing. doing. It's something you even do with joy. Yeah. You know, yeah. I don't know what's your own medicine. Actually, it's very, very true because I used to wonder my mom too, like the one superwoman, super, she just does everything. And behind all of the work and everything, she's always praying for everybody in the house. And, you know, all my life I've never known where the money for feeding comes from or what. She just goes out to work and when she comes back, her car is filled to the brim with all kinds of things. And she's there to tell you when to wake up early. You know, she wakes us up early, do the prayers, do your chores. And do you know she goes through your homework page Every by day. page? Every, Every blessed day. day. Every day. So sometimes it's, it's really amazing, but like you said, it's just when you grow up, then you begin to wonder, oh, so it, it does happen. It's not magical. It's just how we're wired to be. I think it's just, it's just the beauty that a woman has on the inside of her. You know, that um, little clip also caught me because you notice when the job was advertised, Faith, the, mm -hmm. it wasn't um, looking for just mm -hmm. the female figure, mm -hmm. so to speak. Mm -hmm. You also had male figure mm -hmm. who could fit in, which is why um, Kevin is sitting here with us. Kevin, are you lost? No, I'm lost. I, uh, I, I, it's just that, you know, when you listening to all of you, listen, watching that uh, clip, <clears throat> it brings some memories, you know, while growing up with my mom. I actually didn't have so much of uh, that contact at, at, from the beginning, but later part I got to realize the sacrifices that she actually put in. And mm -hmm. saying there's a time that uh, almost lost our <clears throat> lives in trying to seek for help, you know. What mothers go through uh, in this part of our world, uh, because the woman in court is oftentimes seen as a subject. Mm -hmm. uh, and so she's not given all of the opportunities that um, I've made counterpart do, we have. She was denied education, but she still ensured that all her kids, you know, go through what she didn't go through. Uh, she always said that I take money by English. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 you know. If I can speak it, my my money has actually oh, yes. made that possible. Mm -hmm. um, okay, she take money by English, meaning that her children. Yeah. Oh, okay, children, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, so I was just going through that thought um, and appreciating all of the effort that she put in, you know, um, to see that all her kids. Uh, came out so good at the end of the day. But we don't find that common these days. Uh, what we find these days is the competitive tendencies of uh, uh, parents not being intentional in parenting. You know, you find that common with the upper mobile professionals who want to be out there. Both parents are out there working. The kids are being parented by TV, ourselves, and, and the likes. You name it. 
So that's that that that's um, <laughs> that's, that's a bit uh, judgmental. Because because come come to think about it, really, you know, that actually uh, brought it tear to my eye when I saw that I lost my mom um, some six years ago, oh, and sorry, it's still very fresh. fresh. Yes. So even if it's me, you know, you never get over the pain. I still I still feel really bad. You never get over the pain, especially when. Uh, you know that at times when, when I walk and I remember, maybe I'm in a situation like this, what comes to my mind is, oh, my mother would have been praying for me by now. <laughs> she will pray hours. She's going to take her bath. She's there praying. She's coming out in the morning. She's praying. She's walking. She's praying and all of that. So, but let me just quickly uh, address that. You know, you, you have a spouse. Both of you work. And then as a mother, you are coming out from the car. You drop your bag, sometimes in the sitting room, and you're heading straight to the kitchen. You have worked eight hours. At times, you don't even get paid the same salary that your spouse get paid. You're, work, you're, you're going straight to the kitchen to make sure there's food on the table, the children are, are, are doing that. I do that a lot. I come home, I go straight to the kitchen. As soon as we finish dinner, I'm asking, have you done your home phone? Have you, you know, that's what they call it these days. They no longer call it assignment, oh, okay. so they call it home phone. Mm -hmm. Then you sit down home there. Home phone because you don't want it to look as <laughs> yes, as if it's assignment, it's a job. <laughs> you know. So and then you are sitting there for one hour, two hours. You are going through all of that assignment. You are making sure that they take their bath. They are getting ready to. Uh, they are getting ready to go to to bed before. You, at times you just realize I'm still in my work clothes. You realize I am still in my work clothes. True. This happens. Just t take a typical example. Yesterday, I came in from I came in from Makodi. I went straight, straight. I mean, straight to the kitchen to prepare something we would eat. That's always the first place. Oh, after yes. eating, <laughs> after eating, I called my son. Have you done your home phone? And he's like, Oh, mommy, no. I said, Go and get your home phone. I was still sitting on the dining table. He brought his home phone. We did our home phone. Made sure he had his bath. That was when I realized I was still in the clothes that I traveled all the way from my country. So when we make a general statement like it's no longer like that, it's it's really not the way because if you come into homes, the kind of the kind of picture people paint outside is different from what really happens in the home. There are career women that I know. Maybe when they want to travel, they have made like three or five different kinds of soup. They put it mm -hmm. in different containers. Yeah. They put it in the fridge just to make sure that. And they, they tell you, in the morning, eat this. In the afternoon, eat this. I do that a lot. In the evening, bring out soup and eat this because the soup is already there. Mm -hmm. Okay, I withdraw the statement, general statement. <laughs> There's an exception now. Yeah, so I withdraw that uh, general statement. But when you look at the average and you find out that um, most parents, are not intentional in parenting. Yes, of course, there are a few who still go to traditional way, which as mm -hmm. much as possible, as well as they need to pursue career, still do the needful, like you just mentioned, ensuring that everything that needs to put in place is put in place, the kids have been taken care of, they still find time to look at the books. Yes. You know, at night. I also know that there are some parents, um, especially uh, personality differences, there are some, you know, fathers that act like mothers, and there are some mothers that, that act are like, like fathers. fathers. That's true. You know, and so I know that. And so when she said, I mentioned far, more. far mother. I'm far more like a mother, you know, to my kids than the other way around. We should, we should give you a round of applause. Happy Mother's Day. Oh, thank oh, you. Wow. I, just like the, the one I just passed now, right? The modern yes. son that I yes. just done. Yes. You know, so it's, it's, the, it's the biological defect that we have and uh, we must embrace. But we must also understand that Society is what it is because of parenting. Yes, definitely. So if we lose that, mm -hmm. what we see in the society is, is what we've actually given. It's gapping the garbage out. Yes. There's no two ways about it. There are values that were inculcated in me that still lives to date. Yeah. My dad passed on eight years ago, not 12 years now, rather, mm -hmm. and it's still there. You know, this like more than 40 years ago, it's still there. Mm -hmm. Because those values were inculcated from the onset. It guides what I do every day. Well, are we doing the same thing? How much are we educating our kids to realize who they are first as human beings before their gender? It's very key. It's key, yeah. You know, it, then we look at our faith. How much of those values in our faith are they inculcating? How are we living exemplary lifestyles to show that what we speak is what we do? Because kids are like sponges. So they don't copy what you say. They copy what you do. Hmm. So if you preach, don't steal, 
Then you come back home, you can't even... See, I go ask, my daughter will ask me, where are you going to? Mm -hmm. exactly. I it's come back, uh, three days ago, I went, to, I thought I was going for a party. I came in late. I said, why did you come back home late? <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's good. No, no, I have to myself to yeah. them. Yes. The reason why I'm accountable to them is I want them to also know they that. They're accountable. Exactly. That's me. right. It's just it. You You're know, closing so. late from work. They are calling you. They're calling you. you know, they out. know when I usually would close. Mm -hmm. But if I'm taking 30 minutes and I don't call, they are calling. Mommy, where are you? And we it's are very good. And, I, and I'm like, hey, give me a little while, I'll soon finish. But you should have told us you're coming late. Liz, Liz. And I go like, I'm sorry. sorry. Because I was supposed to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? So that's uh, this thing. But when, you, when we talk about mothers, we talk about um, you know, moms, parenting and all that. In my place, there is something we, we say. We said, um, in fact, actually, people are called Adora. Mm. That's daughter of all. Oh. You know, Mwara children or child of all mm. who based on this uh, uh, you know, statement who is a mother and who should be parenting well, <laughs> well okay let me just um, attempt that uh, I think like he said a mother is not just by the biological mm -hmm. uh, setting anybody can be a mother including the father because what does it take to be a mother is all about caring we just saw the video which is that clip you see everything in comparison feeding everything the psychological you are you are responsible to raising the psych a psychologically balanced person a physically balanced person uh, physically when i say physical i'm not talking about the physical defects mm -hmm. these are natural things or beyond our control you know but i'm talking about those things that are within our control so it is your responsibility as a mother as a parent to make sure that you you raise children that are balanced psychologically they are balanced socially and of course they should be balanced also ec economically that's why you see a lot of women go the extra mile or a lot of parents go the extra mile to teach their children certain skills certain things they need to do and i think he made mention of something very important helping these children to realize who they are first and foremost mm -hmm. you see this is where a lot of the time we miss it we want to teach them where they're from what they have before they know who they are yeah, yeah. so at the end of the day you get to miss the most important thing so everybody whether a man or woman everybody is inclusive i remember when we were growing up i i i really don't like my mother traveling because that moment everybody's <laughs> eyes are on you and when she comes back i don't forget if i do something wrong her friends, my neighbors will call me, they'll scold me, and when she comes back, they will report it back to her. Even after scolding me. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I really don't like her being away. I prefer if she's around, at least it's only one scold. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all encompassing. All of us are involved in this matter. Your children are my children, my children are your children, and every other person here. It's our collective responsibility. He made a very vital point. He said, the society we live in today, is as a result of parenting. What kind of parenting? Good enough, we still have some people that still believe in the old scoop way. You know, there's people that are doing that. Yeah. And I believe that absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yesterday night I went out, I, I came home, checked my boy's uh, uh, homework. He's the only one at home. Checked his homework. And then I asked him, let's go strolling. We went for a walk together. And I asked him, what about your exams? How did it go today? Which paper do you have tomorrow? He said he has only one. I said, okay, immediately we come back. Make sure you take a shower. Go through. Let me see what you've and all of this yeah it happens you know there are some people that do that but there are some of times that we just say i'm just so tired mm -hmm. i don't have time mm -hmm. and those are those little little time that we let go and it affects the children definitely you, you know you let me just uh, say that as we're just discussing this it, it comes to my mind that um those people who thought of mentoring thought of mothering first mm -hmm. because it, the act of mentoring is actually the act of mothering being a mother being a mother it's not just defined because you have given birth but, you yeah. know biologically to a child that's a process mm. you know but mothering it's more than that act of uh, of motherhood that you are taking care of somebody you are molding the character of the yeah. person ensuring that the person turns out uh, uh, something else better in society usually when you mentor somebody you are mentoring the person to be able to feel so 
some gaps that you have not been mm. able to fill. And we are murdering somebody, also murdering the person to be a better version of you. And that's mm. the whole idea of, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, parenting. Parents want to see their children perform better, uh, you know, fill those gaps like, you know, I buy English with money, that kind mm -hmm. of a thing. Mm -hmm. When you know this is my defect, you want to mentor somebody that will fill that gap also in, in, in society. But unfortunately, we're beginning to lose some of those things that make us truly Africans, that communal kind of living. Yeah. Such yeah. that if if I see your mm -hmm. child going astray, I don't want to come to tell you because I don't want to spoil the relationship between us. But on the long run, what happens is that you destroy that child and you destroy society. So what belongs to them? I know that's where this whole mentality of what is like, for instance, if government are produces, it's government that produces, not our own. Our so own anything own. can happen to it. Anything can happen to it. And as far as we continue to have that kind of mentality growing up, that kind of reasoning, we definitely will get it uh, uh, wrong in society. I know one other thing that has pushed us to where we are in society now, where you say women are uh, you know, going to be trying to make ends meet, culture. We have had a situation, many, so many situations of women who gave up everything for the family. And as soon as the head of the family passes, the other members of the family will come and strip that woman everything. of everything she had done. So now what women are doing is protecting their children, the future of their children, so that when that happens, their, their children are positioned in such a way to be able to understand that mommy contributed this. They can fight back. They can do that. But unfortunately, sometimes, you know, nature happens and death comes, and then the children are still too young. They're not able to take care of themselves. Their extended family comes to destroy all, all of that, and you have not been able to build that. And that's why it seems like women are just so much in a hurry. So be. much in a hurry to bridge that gap. Sometimes these women, it had happened to their, their mothers. Mm. It had happened to their grandparents. Mm -hmm. So they want to change that narrative. They don't want a situation where, but do you have to go to court? to court to say that this my husband's inheritance or my father's inheritance should be given to me to take care of my children. You don't have to do that. So in order not to do that, people are trying to secure the lives and the future of their children. That's why we are getting to where we are getting to I, I, right I, now I, with I, the narrative. Good point, it's good all point about you actually made there, and I have a solution to it. Uh, one of the things I did with my uh, spouse then was to look. We are from polygamous homes. Yes. And I used to work in an environment where death was like this. Hmm. I mean, because, I mean, um, working with the president then, carrying arms and all of those things, at any point in time, death could call. So I said, look, it's important we, you know, every asset we're going to own, we put in the names of the children so that they can easily transit into ownership. Because if it's in my name, probably my family could just come in and say, is ours. Yeah. If it's in our name, our family could just come and say it's ours. But if it's in the children's name, nobody can come and claim ownership to say it's theirs because it's in the children's names. So every asset that we own plays in the names of the children. So we are only custodians to what we have. So in case death happens, it's easy for them to transit into ownership without necessarily going to court, without looking for ways to get those things done. Now, you see, sometimes for some persons, oh no, you shouldn't put in the names of the children. You know, because... You know, you know what you're saying? <laughs> Halima is busy waiting yeah, at this. Yeah, because yeah. Maybe Halima is coming from the culture uh, that uh, believes that whether it is in the children's name or not, uh, no. they will fight you. No, yeah. I well, know that culture. The children belong to them. You. That's what they'll tell you. Exactly. exactly. No, they the children will still fight take ownership. You. At, that's when they come of age. 18 years. And they know. 18 years. And they know. They will come to take ownership. When, when they, they come of age. Before 18, 18 what happens? they come of age. <laughs> Those things would have been gradually transferred you. to well, your family. Well, you know, once the names of a thing is given, the ownership is clearly defined. That's one. Two, you said, that's a question about motherhood. I mean, they all said something very key, which is very important, lovely, this thing. But there are also people who, women who are just, they just give birth, but they're not qualified to be mothers. Sorry to say, many. In my short time here on earth, I've actually witnessed a lot of those things where women just, they believe that children will be what they will be. That's the statement I've heard. Children will be what they will be, so they don't put in any effort to see to the growth <laughs> of that child. They don't put in any effort. To them is that even to breastfeed that child is a problem because they want to protect their breasts. So they don't want to breastfeed the child. That's what society has done. You know, yeah. six months or so. It's not necessarily society. I think it's also the fact that 
it's parenting where we fail to really educate the people on the need what they need to do. I didn't know that breastfeeding is that important until my adulthood. That oh. is, yes, I didn't know that is is giving a breast milk for one year makes the child to be stronger. Mm -hmm. are, are we teaching that in the society? Do we copy the cultures of the West without necessarily <laughs> thinking of the importance? Because I mean, with what I went through from what my mother told me from growing up, you know, if I was not properly breastfed, I would have actually died long ago. Mm -hmm. You know, but the breastfeeding really helped. Yeah. So we need to begin to educate our children to know the importance of motherhood. It's not just parenting. Because, you see, whatever a child becomes in the future is partly as a result of the nurturing beyond the nature. If the mother in the cause of nurturing speaks the right words, ensures that the child is well compensated for the growth processes and punished accordingly, not necessarily leaving things for the father, you know, in most cases, when your father calls you, we see. So the father becomes a monster. So there's no connection. When that child gets older, only sees the mother. So we see mothers enjoying all of the benefits. <laughs> at the end of the day. Right, let's, let's quickly take a bit of a message. Oh, Matthew. Matthew wrote, is writing it from Apo. And Matthew has written about three different messages. I don't know which one to read now. They're all long. Okay, let's read the middle one and play safe. The best thing I have come across in life is my sweet mother, <clears throat> my love, my best friend, and my world. Thank you, mommy. I love you dearly. That's from Matthew. And I'm glad I read this one. If your mom is listening, Thank you for being uh, such a sweet mom for uh, Matthew. And uh, quickly choose to challenge parenting as parents in the process of putting value to children. Should we do everything for them? Uh, that's coming from Elder Abuchi mm -hmm. in Umahia. And uh, everybody here says the answer no, is no. 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 Okay. Not. okay. So um, parenting is not as easy task is not an easy task to do especially with a single parent sometimes i cry and ask god for help because sometimes they will ask me questions that i am not prepared for mm -hmm. especially from the age of 12 15 17 sometimes i even go into the internet to find answers to the mm -hmm. question even from delta states even don't worry all of us go through it <laughs> The mother or the parent is everything. You ah. have to know everything. Ah. <laughs> you, you must always work ahead of time. Yes. You know, and um, when I, I recall when my kids were toddlers, I felt, oh God, I can't wait to get out of this age so I can have a breathing space. Mm -hmm. They got to teenage youth. Uh -huh. And <laughs> you, started, like, you know, all those dependency <laughs> on you, uh -huh. you know, they started trying to mind their own business. And I was looking for how to break their break own cycle, yes. to find out what was going on in their head, mm -hmm. to be a part of it and all that. I had to stop being the adult and try to be a teenager yeah. myself, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to fit in. They got to the 20s. It became oh. even tougher, mm -hmm. you know. Some people will see you and say, oh, you're done with all these problems. And I tell them, there is no end. Mm -mm. As long as, as, as you're a life. mother, mm -hmm. there's no end. You become a grandmother today. The problem is now times two. Yeah. Mother, grandmother. Yeah, mother. So the worry keeps going on. Mm. There's no end. And the only thing I think we can always do, it's never enough. Like he said, be their encyclopedia. Mm -hmm. Try to work ahead of them. Just like experience tells us, you know, um, read ahead, be abreast of time, try to find out what is happening, especially for the younger ones. You're not that you're, you're the God they are seeing, you know, everything you tell them and tell them the truth. If you want your children to become peace ambassadors tomorrow, it, it starts now. Be peaceful. Yeah. Yeah. Don't tell them, okay, uh, hate uh, this tribe, mm. like this tribe, mm -hmm. hate this family. There are parents that I know who tell you, don't greet this family. Transferring your beef. Right. But it's catastrophic to it them. Is, yes. Mm. At the end of the day, it comes back to you. To you. Whatever you teach your children. I've seen parents like that too. But at the end of the day, they do not have peace because their children chase them right in their house. They can't sleep any longer. <laughs> you have consistently mm. groomed a child that has become a monster. Yeah. Trust me, he will start with you or she will start with you. The Frankenstein principle. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Now, somebody is asking a question here. Maybe you come in. How do you begin to discuss sex education with your child? It's easy. <laughs> it's very easy. And very important. Yeah, and very important. Yeah, it's very important. Yes, I, we started, um, I started um, sex education from four years with my kids in the beat. 
uh, ensuring that all body parts are named the way they're supposed so to be named. Supposed to be named, that's right. Not necessarily calling the penal uh, for the Christmas or other thing. No, what it is, what it's supposed to be. Christmas, that's what we call it. When we were growing up, they used to tell us it's for the Christmas. Well, you, I'm hearing this for the first time. Because they don't want to give the names of those yeah, body parts. Body parts. In the thinking that saying that is too vulgar. Mm -hmm. You spoil the child. And you spoil the child. That was the thinking while growing up. But in adulthood, I realized that you need to be able to give the names as they're supposed to be. So the, the kids know what it is. So when the child is touched in, a, in an insensitive part, the child knows that. Knows, that exactly. Is, you know, touched, and reacts immediately. And reacts immediately. Mm. And so they know. Something happened in, my, in the school that my daughter was going. This, one of the teachers, you know, held her hands and pecked the hand. And she came back home and said it. So I went back to the school. As I was going, while in the car. A female they, or male? A male. Hmm. Hmm. While in the car with me, the, the teacher came and said, why are you dodging? What was he trying to do? Trying to prove to her that he still had access to her, he responded that the father was father, there. Yes. Are you serious? So I went wow, straight to the serious. management and I said, call this guy. They called him and he said, I said no, he was nothing. I slapped him immediately. Hell. Hmm. And the next thing I said to them, if they don't move that boy from that school, my kids are leaving that school, I'm going to make it public. If we don't take such kind of decisions, this, yes, exactly. actions, you made that child to become subservient to such predictor. It's true. And so what was I said, was I teaching the kids. Recently, uh, my daughter is 14, and so we talk on these issues, mm -hmm. that to have likeness or the opposite sex is nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. They need to know. Mm -hmm. Developing likeness is nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. But what you do after the likeness, what is wrong? So exactly. every child must understand that, like every mango that is on the tree, until it's ripping, it doesn't fall off. Mm -hmm. So if you pluck it out of the tree, you pinch it, it will get ripened faster, mm -hmm. but the taste will be different and you get spoiled. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So they know that they must wait a certain time where they, they can start experiencing this whole of experience. And I said, sex is actually good, but it's designed for husband and wife only. Exactly. So they know. So she told me, somebody said, he likes her in school. So really, okay, what did you say to him? She said, she said nothing. So do you like him? She smiled. I said, okay, you like him. <laughs> Sensitive dad. That's you know, very so sensitive. And then yeah. my son came up and said to me, it, somebody mentioned masturbation in school and he didn't know what it was. I said, I didn't tell you. I said, forgive me. So I told him. He said, hey, another child told me is to... You, you know, didn't find it strange? No. Talking? No, yes, of course. We have to create that environment. So, yes, to be able to speak, To discuss. Yeah, to discuss anything. So he said, and another student explained mm. to him what masturbation is. And that is lovely. It's sweet. Oh, wow. So I called him. I said, sit down. Masturbation is destructive. Mm -hmm. It is like you trying to make yourself happy for a short time, but it ends up entering your head and destroys it completely. Uh, behind, you know, that before you know what's happening, you're no longer, I said, okay, let's do this thing. Let's rub our palms. Let's rub our palms. And after a while, I started feeling heat. I said, suddenly, you say, Rivian, do you feel anything on your palm? He said, no. I said, because you keep rubbing on this thing, so you're no longer going to get the sensitive touch you're supposed to have. Mm -hmm. So that's okay. I said, have you tried it? He said, you know, when the boy said it, I, I wanted to touch it, but I said, ah, oh, no. I said, okay. The information he got in school mm. was what was trying to, like, make him to yeah, want to experience it. Experience you, it see, you see, what you're saying, not too long ago, you know, a, a mother was talking to me about the son, and she said that uh, each time that the boy talks too much, he comes home, he's always blabbling and blabbling and blabbling, mm. and that he has won the boy. Please don't come and tell me anything about your school again because no, you're very no. troublesome. No. I said no. Communication no. is very important. important yes. Whatever very they are blabbling about, it's listen. important. Listen. What is listen. your own job? It's true. Open your ear and listen. Listen. You know, I don't. So now I said listen. At the end of the whole, I recall when I was coming, my last child was um, quite young, mm. and um, very pretty fond of me. So I come in. I I go go around my business. Mm. She she will always follow me around. I give her a little thing, biscuits. Of course, everything that happened in the school, yeah. she, would she would tell me. Everything that happened in the house, she would tell me. And the good thing I did was, as she talked, I didn't take action immediately. Mm -hmm. When we sit down to talk, I'll push the yes. person involved closely to it until you admit it to yourself. Then yes. I follow it up. That way, they won't need to call her report card. Yes, exactly. Or snitch. Yes. Exactly. All those names, they don't like them. You know. So it's important as mothers to create that bonding time, that listening time. Don't always be on the talking part. Let your children Listing, do the talking. Ask questions. You yes. know, you sit with them in their rooms mm -hmm. and let them play. 
while they are playing with their friends, mm -hmm. while they are playing with, uh, with uh, their From siblings. From time to time, snoop into the phone you, and you, see you what know, happening. You know what you just said now? And at, at times, you also need to understand how they report things. For instance, my son. My son will not come and say, oh, this, this, that, this person did that. She'll come and say, mommy, um, she, she, you said we should not do this kind of a thing. I would just know somebody had done it. <laughs> <Just something. laughs> she would say, he would say, uh, mommy, that's a uh, seat there. You say somebody should not touch that thing there, Abby. That's how he asked me, Abby. Mm. Then he will not say anything again. Oh, and I will just know <laughs> that something had gone wrong. Is it okay? Is it okay? You know, I, I, I just want to... Is it okay? Just... <laughs> That's my son's style. I, wa I want to uh, speak on something he said. You know, before now, before we got to this internet of a thing, mm. the society is too reserved. And like he said, we don't talk about certain things because we feel it's vulgar. Is wrong and we feel that it might corrupt the children so we don't want to talk about it and funny enough it's still happening in this society there are still people mm. that feel no we shouldn't talk about these things with the children mm. that if you are telling them this thing is adult things unfortunately for us mm. we are in a society where everybody has a phone including your children in fact my children know how to operate my phone better than better, I do yeah. so they get all the information so if you don't parent them at home especially with regard to these issues they will get it somewhere yeah. and like his son the got the wrong side of it with the price so yeah, but the greatest important. competition the greatest competition uh, against parenting is peer pressure because whether we like it or not they have all of that time with their friends their mm. age mates and all of that and they're getting that information mm. so if you don't if you're not always ready with the other information the correct Corrected. information they will just go that go way, that way. Mm. and all it right. will be so uh, uh, so traumatic imagine for when you. your daughter yeah, said I, to you yes the, uh, the, um, a, a boy in the school said have you watched pornography before Ooh. And she said no. She said, "Ah, they say, ah, this is it's nice, yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah. you know." Are you because we've discussed no, about it before now. Look at old school. Yeah, we've discussed it before now. Mommy's at daughter. Home. So when it happened in school, it was easy for her to reject it. Mm. And I followed it up in the school that they need to begin to check kids. And so this is more like speaking to parents also. And as much as you leave your kids with phones, yes, it's good to give them Careful, phones. Yeah. But please take the phones from 10 p.m. because what kids do, they don't sleep. They have access to raw sex yes, sure. with their phones. They can claim 18 years and have access to these things. It's free. In some cases, you get it like a deluge form, and they have all of those things. So the school now started seizing phones, checking bags, doing all those things. But parents need to do more work. More, yeah. Yeah. All right, so we'll take a break uh, quickly. But uh, somebody says, yeah, do you like our lying car? It says, uh, my mother is very awesome. She's a priceless drawer, and I love her so much. Thank you, Olayinka. I hope your mom is listening. Let's quickly take a break. When we come back, we'll react to some of the messages here. Yeah? In the midst of the coronavirus pandemic, information management is key. I'm Cyril Stober. Fatima Umabuba. Joseph Johnson. Ian Ray. John. Muhammad Kudu Abubakar. Jumwe Yusuf. My name is Kirian Umayo. Here in NTA, we're working very hard to make sure that everything we broadcast is accurate and up to date. Misinformation spreads very fast. The social media has been a huge conveyor of misleading information from one individual to another, then to another set of groups. In a short while, it goes viral, and before you know it, it is all over the world. There have been several misleading information on coronavirus, COVID-19. Recently, the misconception of 5G as a cause of coronavirus is becoming widespread. Another is the belief that hot beverages and alcoholic drinks are internal cleanser for COVID-19, thereby leading to excessive consumption of these drinks. The use of local concoctions as treatment for COVID-19 are yet to be scientifically proven. However, there has been several theories about the efficacies of these concoctions. We should stay safe and denounce all manner of fake news and misleading information on COVID-19. For medical advice, go on the WHO website, Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC website, or stick with the advisories from the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 or other authentic official sources. NCA is one of them.
Now it is still conversations and we're talking parenting challenges and of course we women and farm moms have decided to <laughs> pick up the challenge and face it headlong because we must get it right when it comes to parenting. And someone is still writing here. When I was a young when I was young, my sweet mother <laughs> used to beat us mercilessly at times. <laughs> Sometimes we began to see her as a wicked mother. Uh, my mother, she will carry over punishment for you. <laughs> and then it was cruel. <laughs> but now, on a high side, I thank my mom for all of that high-handedness, uh, uh, yes, which sure. has made us who we are. Okay, that's still Matthew from Apple. Matthew, me and you, we came from the same background. That's how we are treated. <laughs> and that's what has actually helped us be who we yes. are. What should a mother do if the mother tried to beat her child and the child run out, of, run out from the house and the child does not come back home? He, she went to sleep in another person's house in the passage of time without the knowledge of that friend. I don't know. That's from Temi Tokwe. Temi Tokwe didn't tell us where she's writing from, but okay, it's, let's. Okay, it starts, it, you know, it, that dungeon starts from overnight. You know, um, overnight. It's the... something that started from a long time. Mm -hmm. She probably must have aided that child to that extent. Mm -hmm. And so now that you want to begin to assert yourself, the child finds it difficult to understand mm -hmm. why you want to do that now mm -hmm. at this later stage. And so what I advise for that parent to do is to talk things over. Do projective communication. Give the child a picture of what it means to be in a fantastic relationship. Mm -hmm. And once that starts taking place, mm -hmm. that child will begin to move towards such projective statement. It's more like being prophet prophetical in your statement. And say, do you know that this is what a child X, Y, Z does? Can you bring the glass And over? all of those things. You know, mm -hmm. Once you do that, the child begins to want to take ownership mm -hmm. of the responsibility that is demanded. Mm -hmm. But if you go because there are kids, see, resistance, resistance, authority is often, oftentimes resisted in any given form. In some cases, you have to negotiate your authority mm -hmm. and not necessarily being assertive. In other cases, you have to coerce it. In mm -hmm. other cases, you have to manipulatively, you know, bring that to bear. Then in other cases, you must force it. Depending on that child's personality defect, if you go put it on a child that is strong-willed, hmm. you'll be shocked to see that you're raising a monster. Hmm. And that's why if you keep beating a child and the child is not responding, after a while, what happens? So you have to negotiate. Yes. And there are, there are those kids that are also ADHD kind of kids, you know. Hmm. They already have this, you know, mental issue. So they are very restless. So what you want to do is to find a way to get them busy with the things that interest them and use that as a vehicle to get them to be communicate with them. Yeah. I actually don't think um, caning, we may have had it in our own days, but today's world, caning a child is not always the way out. I'm no, not saying not. that you should no, no, not. No. You should still no. do it. I do it sometimes, but it's Once not always while. the way out. Once in a while, surprise yes. beating. Well, yes, surprise exactly. Beating. exactly. I know, I know exactly. It, there, there are so many ways, including, like you said, dialogue. And very importantly for me, my children's friends are all my friends. Yeah. Key. Hmm. Very important. They're important. all my friends. Yes. You know, I make efforts to know their friend's birthday, mm. know their friend's mom, because if I get to understand the, the background, background the of the yes. friends to my children, mm. it helps me to understand how to relate with them. And then I can always use those friends to talk to my children. Mm -hmm. You know? So it's, it's um, if, if this child is running away, to me talk where I'm speaking to you now, if this child is running away to the friend's house, how much effort has the mother made to be friends with that friend? I want to believe that if my child goes to her friend, you know, because she's angry, that one knowing me will quickly call me, Mom, Lina is in the house. Here. Exactly. I recall when their friends will come to my place, they'll tell their mom they're going to visit me. They were younger then. Their mom will call me and ask, has this person gotten to your house? I say, yes, I have seen her. When they take off, I will also ask, have you received them? You know, it becomes, you know, dual parenting because mm -hmm. this person knows that the child being in my house will be protected. Mm. So I think um, it, it should actually start very early. Really start, yeah, start actually, early. it's, it's yeah. also about um, creating some kind of support group around the, the parents of the, 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 your children's uh, friends. Because if that, can, that, that thing happens and the family that she ran to didn't call back, then there's something, there's a problem. There's a problem. I think she should actually visit the home where she slept and then find out exactly why the parent or whoever is the head of that house didn't come back 
to let them know that she was there. Because it happens if you don't say, if you don't um, have that conversation, mm. what will happen is she will continue to go there, maybe hear stories, and then even tell her stories about the mother mm -hmm. that we want mm -hmm. to keep her away from the mother. Mm -hmm. The next thing is that she'll be missing for months and you won't even know where and she has gone to. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I, yes. You know, I think it's, it's, it's important you start early. Mm. Because once you start permitting certain attitude, yes. it becomes a trend yeah. and you can't stop it. Yeah. So when the child goes out like my children they know that six o'clock shouldn't meet you outside even till today so if you are out of the house by 6 p.m you need to explain to me what mm. happened where have you gone to and there's no way i will enter the house and not see one of my child and i will not act around i will check i will call your phones i will call everybody mm -hmm. that i know in fact if i Is come back person... from work or anywhere at the door Everybody has to Everybody come and come out. Exactly. It's not because I'm looking for something. Something. It tells me look. okay. You people are okay. It tells me you're well. Mm -hmm. It tells me time, I'm accepted. <laughs> yes, exactly. And in this time that we have so much insecurity, it's not just about mm -hmm. parenting now. It's also about the security of the children. Mm -hmm. We have this issue of rapes. In fact, the rape doesn't just stop at rape. To the point mm. of killing the child mm. we have so much issue so a mother a parent you must be you must be i don't even know the right word to use but you just have to check your children and you have to stop this attitude early if the child but come to think of it is it is it possible that there was a time as a mother i have i i, I advised you to run somewhere maybe your father wants to give you uh, some lashes and then i say run to your friend's house that's where it all starts and tomorrow when i want to do my own of course you will automatically a child will automatically run some so i think right. there is a lot of work to be done let's read more of these messages before they begin to kill us <laughs> my name is timothy from port hackers uh, mom is one of the best thing among all the things my mom can do anything to make us happy mom a strong pillar in a home i love my mom thank you timothy thank you for loving your mom and uh, i know that one thing your mom is not just the one in the house with you so love other moms too <laughs> good morning i'm loretta what if the parents don't have the opportunity of training their children will children still love them definitely i know it will not Some be purpose. as much as you I, I give you time to react to that i know you want to talk about that <laughs> okay godly values is dead in homes today wow let's go home go back to godly value mind what we hear see parents do the what uh, do and watch and watch the watch gather them to pray study bible together okay so inculcate the right value in your children and uh, like the bible says they will grow up like that uh, as a mother how do you encourage your child who is afraid of a particular teacher to go to school that's from Ngozi. this is a typical one yeah you know i wanted to talk about <laughs> go that to school, mission. Yeah. i have three children and all of them have different or distinct character my son, if you shout on him, or you, he won't go to school again. My daughter is a, the, the small one now. All you need to do, anything you want her to do is just praise her. It's okay. She will do it. So my son has this teacher that once he said one thing or, you know, there's an approach the teacher gives him. So he makes, it makes him, he doesn't want to go to school. Hmm. I had to like intervene. I had to go to the school. I said, all these things you're doing, he said, eh, the boy is not doing this. I said, you're just wasting your energy. The only thing you need is to sit with this boy. And that, is, that solves your problem. So we need to understand the different attitude, the distinct characteristics of our children. And we approach them and apply parenting that way. And it is important. Now, I wanted to also say something that uh, my brother said earlier. You know, uh, when he talked about his son and, and the teacher talking his, uh, touching his daughter. Now... I am not an advocate for extremes, you know, like he said, he slapped the teacher. I, I wouldn't do that. And I feel that, you know, when you do that in the presence of the children, now you're, you're also passing another message. So mm -hmm. I think there should be some kind of balancing in between, mm -hmm. you know, with this and that. Yeah, the teacher is wrong to have done this. And it was good that you took that step to correct it. But I think... It shouldn't go to the extent of slapping, especially where the children are involved looking, you know, because it sends another message. I agree so, with you. So I, I, just right. I agree with you, but there's another point you need to understand. When the boy, the teacher walks up to the car to tell my daughter, so why intimidating, you hiding, hiding. Yeah. intimidating mm. in my presence. Mm. If I didn't take such kind of steps, mm. it would have been worse. See, okay. we always need to show proof of standing for our kids. We must show spiritual strength, I agree. physical strength, I agree. economic strength. 
and societal recognition. Those are the things that actually strengthen. That's why sometimes when you go to school and you don't have all of this thing put together, your kids sometimes don't have the confidence with which they relate to other kids. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, okay. <laughs> quickly to advise, I, I think she should actually pay a visit to the school mm -hmm. and find out what uh, uh, well, the problem is. Yes. Yes. Before she can handle that. Yes. Try yes. to talk with the child. And then go yes. to the school. Yeah. Okay, Ngozi, I'm mm. sure you're listening. Talk with your child and then find out from the school. Very quickly, I appreciate mothers for their role. Uh, but the parents are also, also there. The parenting is about mother and father. Somebody says, yeah, that's uh, Kenneth. Wabosa in Port Harcourt, and he added that fathers provide provision, protection, discipline, education, and all of that. We are not doubting that, but remember, we're celebrating the women, and so we must talk about the women. My mom is an icon in my life. Thank you very much. You didn't write your name, but your mother is hearing you. Somebody here says, I love my mother. A lot of messages are coming in here. I wish I can take in all of them. That's for those who gave a shout out to their mother, Chibuzo is giving a shout out to her mom. Chibuzo is writing it from anywhere. We don't read all the messages, but your mom is listening. It's the best. And our time is about up. Oh, maybe just one more shout out to mothers. Happy Mother's Day. Sweet mother. She is good. You didn't write your name, but your mother, you say, is a lovely woman. Yes, all of us, we always say our mothers are lovely, especially when we are grown ups. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> especially when I went to the labor room and came out, I appreciated my mother. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, don't, I didn't recall calling my father. It was mommy, <laughs> mommy, come on, mommy, spend it here. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> well, that's true. All right, on behalf of all the mothers in the house <laughs> and the mothers at home, this lovely rose came from Faith, straight from her garden. Thank you. And she says, "You will all blossom, just as this is rose." Amen. We'll see you again next week when we're discussing another angle of womanhood, and um, I don't know. I think it will be employment or. Empowerment, yes. Let's see it. For now, it's bye-bye. So you should find a way to talk about <laughs> fathers. <laughs>